And I think that we have everyone on now. Good, Good morning. Good morning. So I'll go ahead and begin. This is the 2021 budget workshop for Mason County. And we have in attendance, Randy Netherland, Sharon Trask, Diedrich Allen, Diane Zorn, Frank Pinter, Jennifer Baria, Kevin Schutte, Leo Kim, Mackenzie Smith, and Cheryl Hilt. And with that, I'm gonna share my screen. Can everyone see the, uh, the budget worksheet? Okay, great. So we have, um, I just wanna go over the recap of um, the revenues and expenditures comparing uh, 2020 to 2021, the adopted 2020 budget to the proposed uh, 2021 budget so far at this point. So for, the, for current expense for the um, adopted budget, in revenues, we have $49,581,229. That includes the beginning fund balance. And for expenditures, we have the same $49,581,229. And for the 2021 uh, proposed budget so far, we have $53,026,554. And the same in expenditures. And uh, that is a total uh, revenue increase of 6.95% and total expenditure increase of 6.95%. Um, the main contributors to the, the difference, the $3,445,325 between last year and this year is the beginning fund balance, the $2,363,042. And then there's $1,082,283 that's um, in other, other revenues, um, mainly the Department of Community Development, 386,790 over last year. And then we have um, $447,202 in motor pool revenues. And um, then some other small differences um, in some of the other departments, we have um, 100,000 in the auditor's office. Uh, we have um, in non-departmental 173,682. And then on the expense side, we have um, the main differences in the sheriff department, 1,364,400. And then all the other um, small changes are relatively small. We, we have um, in non-departmental 682,743. And that difference is because we um, changed the IT transfer out. So that's what that main difference is. The, um, we don't do it as a transfer out anymore. We're doing it through um, as an expenditure line under non-departmental. So that's what that difference is there, the 446,319, that's the main difference. Um, any, any questions on this um, at this point? Okay. Can, can you print it, have this printed out so I can have it in my hand, please? Yes, it is in your budget book, actually. Um, oh, and it's it, also online as well. You put it in my budget book? I did, it's at the beginning under um, the uh, briefing summary sheet for November okay. 7th. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. That helps me. Okay, good. good. And before we move on too much further, um, I wanted to go over in the EDC contract that was briefed um, last week, um, the, um, the dollar amounts were changed in the contract to go to the businesses. Um, we did have 15,000 for uh, contracts that were 
uh, less, or I'm sorry, businesses that have less than 20 employees, 20 or less employees, and then 30,000 for businesses that have um, 21 or more employees. And that dollar amount um, during the briefing was changed to uh, 10,000 and 20,000 respectively. So I, I just wanted to um, ask the commission if that was, um, that yeah, was it, Can I jump in right there? I talked to, yeah. to Jennifer this morning and I understand uh, apparently uh, in the beginning, we I do remember us telling them to move forward. Uh, I guess the numbers that they moved forward with were the ones that we, we had given that they had brought to us uh, that we had changed. We don't, since we haven't voted on, we don't actually have to change the number. We can endeavor uh, in talking to Jennifer to make sure we stay within the amounts that we have agreed to as a commission. If something is a special event that has to have that kind of money, then that would still be an option and uh, uh, be something that could be done if it's absolutely necessary, if the other commission would agree with that. So, so as far as putting it in the contract, then um, the 15 and 30 would be okay. Is that what you're saying? Um, what I'm saying, yeah, what I'm saying is because we had already, remember we tasked them to go out early uh, before we had agreed on the actual number. Well, the number they went out with was the other number. So I don't want to put them in a bad space or make them look bad. I would be supportive of is what I'm saying because it's the other commissioner's decision. Uh, I would be supportive of keeping the verbiage exactly how they have written with the idea that we endeavor to keep it at, uh, at 10 and 20 not uh, uh, 30 and, uh, and 15, uh, but yet at the same time, if there's a, an extenuating circumstance that that money can really make a difference between something surviving or not, I would still be able to make that uh, large amount uh, if it was absolutely necessary, but we come together and make that decision. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. I, I think that's, that's the perfect answer to a, a situation that has a definite deadline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think it's more important to, to stick with what we initially said with the limits and then, you know, continue to work on it. But in an effort to get it done in time, keep it moving without making the changes that we discussed previously. So is there any wording changes in the, in the contract then? I'll, I'll change the dollar amounts to 15 and 30 but then is there you know, any wording in there that you want added or just- well, Yeah, we, we did add something when it came to uh, nonprofits. What did we add? For the you want me to jump in here really quick? Sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so Jennifer, I'd, I'd make sure that those, those 15 and 30 say up to 15 and up to 30. So it gives us that flexibility to be able to award less than that. Um, and the nonprofit wording um, just shifted a little bit. It made it more open. Nonprofits can apply. It isn't specific to um, business organization nonprofits um, and they'll be graded as, as a regular application. I can send you that wording right now. Jennifer, I've got it sitting up here in front of me. That would be great. Okay. And the reason that I wanted to bring this up during the budget briefing is that it, you know, anything that we do in 2020 will have an effect on our beginning fund balance for 2021. So that's why this is relevant to uh, 2021. If we kept it at 10 and 20, there's a possibility that, um, you know, not all of that money would get um, granted out to all of the businesses if there's that limit and there's not um, business, enough businesses applying. So. Um, if anyone was curious as to why this is being brought up during the budget briefing. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm good with all that. As long as we keep it the same, we'll handle it internally uh, as, as the need arises. Okay, great. So um, moving on then. Um, so we're gonna go on to the um, budget PLRs, that PLR spreadsheet that I sent, and I'll share that screen. Okay. 
Can everybody see that? Okay. Yep, yep. looking at it now. Okay, so um, so this is this is basically the um, the budget presentation that I have been sharing, except for I added on the side um, notes as to what the PLRs are that have been approved so far by the department. So beginning with uh, revenue and current expense, we have um, 16,000 from historical preservation, uh, moving that department in. And we also will need to add in um, a one-time revenue for their cash transfer from, uh, from historical preservation. So I'll do that for the next uh, meeting. And I'm, I haven't talked to Kathy uh, Chazé yet about that, but um, I think about a $60,000 transfer, um, plan transfer should cover all of their, their cash needs. Because um, we want the transfer to be equal to or more than the transfer, just in case um, they get more cash than they, you know, than we plan on. Um, so anyway, I'll add that transfer in to the next budget briefing. And then we have the $20,000 um, contract with Pioneer School for the Sheriff's Office. And then we have um, the $350,000 um, that's lower, or um, I'm sorry, that's in the treasurer's office that um, I had originally had in, in the budget level three and we removed that amount out. So that's a total of 314,000 in negative PLRs for revenue. Yeah, uh, Jennifer, uh, the sheriff uh, department made notice that they did not receive their money this year for the other contracts. Do we have them in the budget going into next year? Uh, does it look like we'll be receiving that money? I can, I can check with them. So yeah, I made a note to, um, to check on the contracts. So um, any other questions on, on the revenue before we move on to the expense side? No? Okay. So on the expense side, the approved PLRs, we have negative uh, 74,437 in the assessor's office and that was due to removing one FTE and um, then adding in the QLIS system, iPad cellular service, and Verizon. So that came to a, that total of 74,437. The FTE um, value was negative 83,419. The QLIS and iPad and Verizon is um, positive 8,982. And then in the auditor's office, we have the um, 74,659. Uh, PLR, approved PLR so far, we have um, the majority of that is moving from the auditor's O&M fund 104, um, moving the 0.5 FTE of $51,077. Then we have the QLIS system of 3,600, the voters pamphlet of 21,377, and reallocated expendi expenditures of negative $1,395. So that total equals the 74,659. Or, yes. Do we know if the auditor's office is going to get any money for the voters pamphlet? I believe that they are. And I believe- I, yeah, that, um, I thought that was money in money. I thought there was yeah. state yeah. revenue attached to that because of, of the fair share. Right. Legislation that was passed. I remember that the same way. Yeah, and if we go up and look at their revenue, um, they're at one million one thirty through one seven, and then from last year, last year they were at one million twenty nine thousand one ninety. So they have an increase of. Um, 100,827, and yeah, I believe that that voter pamphlet um, was in there. I, I looked at it um, a little while back, but I don't remember ex the exact breakdown, but I think it is a one-for-one one 
Okay, if I remember right, but I'll, I'll check on that too. All right, thank you. You're welcome. So then we have um, in district court, 45,700. And that includes um, a bailiff increase of $6,000, judge pro tem increase of 25,000, IT trackable 1,700. And that IT trackable, um, I believe that should have been 500 and I accidentally moved 1,700 in. So I will adjust that um, out for the next meeting. The interpreter, 5,500, postage, 3,300, travel, 500, juror and witness services due to increase in trials and backlogs, 1,700, and UA costs, and that has offsetting revenue. That's one, one for one, comes in and goes out, $2,000. So that's the total 45,700. On uh, community development, we have an increase of $283,956. And we have a one FTE permit tech, 74,907, a 10% building, um, building, uh, building department uh, lead pay, 8,963, one FTE planner, $100,086, and the Belfer UGA, 100,000 for that total, 283,956. Um, then we have the 16,000 moving the historical preservation fund into the current expenses a, as a department. Um, we already went over the offsetting revenue for that. And then on the prosecutor side, we have um, 14,901. And then in the child support enforcement, we have um, 34,234. So those two increases um, are, have to do with the reorg between child support and the prosecutor departments where we did a negative um, 1.05 total FTE out of child support and a positive 1.05 FTE into, into the prosecutor's office. Um, so um, that grand total is the 14901 and 34 34. Um, Moving on to the sheriff department, we have 365,292 in approved PLRs. That includes remote access software and equipment of 27,000, WASPC accreditation and registration, 2240, 2,240. Uh, two FDE transport deputies for a total of $171,968. Holiday OT, 22,067. And all of these numbers include the attached benefits on them as well. Um, OIC, 3,017. What is OIC, please? That is, um, oh, let me go to. Is that officer in charge? I believe so. Yes, that's officer in charge. Thank you. Then we have the jail healthcare services, 87,000 and jail food contract of 52,000 for the total of 365,292. For the Office of Public Defense, we have currently $34,044. That includes the Defender software, 29,625 and cell phones of 4,419. And now would probably be a good time for me to bring up, um, Peter had emailed, Peter Jones had emailed to um, the commission that um, there's a new RCW 11.130.915, which um, basically um, is ordering that um, there's new parent representation provisions and that they kick in for the office January 1st, 2021, not 2022. And Peter is saying that there are roughly 40 cases open at the moment. That's half an attorney's worth of work that's going to get dropped onto his office. Um, 
in two months that he simply did not account for in his initial budget projections. And so I have a call into him asking, you know, exactly what he is asking for. Um, but I just wanted to bring that up at this time so that the commission's aware that. Well, in such a short term, it's probably going to have to be contract. Do you have uh, any numbers on his contracts? Do we have any contracts out there still? Uh, I don't have any right right okay. now, but I can get that. Okay. And moving on, we have um, in Superior Court, a bailiff increase of $4,185. In Therapeutic Court, we have $8,033. And that's uh, revenue supported, all but $195 of that is revenue supported. We have um, in the treasurer's office, $6,595. Excuse me, that includes TerraScan, $4,000. QLIS, $3,250. And reduction in operating costs of $655. In non departmental, we have an, an insurance increase of $60,000 and then the IT cost to move the auditor's O&M 0.5 FTE is $1,129. So with all of those um, changes that comes to $874,291, $874,291. So is there any anything that you want to talk about at this time or um, get more information on or go over that we haven't already done. Yeah, uh, Jen, um, question regarding the community development positions. Um, what is, um, is, is there a portion of that or, or any of that that uh, in their budget they have being covered by um, revenue from permits or fee-based in any way? Yes, I believe that um, I believe that those positions are both covered by the yeah. increase in their revenue completely. Yeah. I know that's why I was in favor of it. And then uh, as far as one-time expenses would be the EIS. And, um, you know, I think an argument could be made about the lead pay since that has a, a termination date on it. Yes. And I did, did forget to include the lead pay in your, um, your email about the one-time cost. So I'll, um, I'll figure out what, or I'll um, include that and email you again. But um, yeah, the lead pay, the 8963 is definitely another one-time cost. What was that number you had for us for one time? The one-time um, costs right now, or what I emailed to you is $659,915. That includes uh, motor pool capital upfits of 373,319. The Belfair EIS out of DCD of 100,000 and small tools and minor equipment in all the departments of 186,596. And then um, adding in that 8,963 for the lead pay. Wouldn't some of these others be one time as well, though? The Defender software, the uh, um, the Sheriff's Department had some things for or is it remote access software. Um, yeah, all those that one would time be. Defender software. Um, I'm assuming there's a maintenance fee to go along with that, so I didn't include that, but I definitely can um, can include those as one time costs as well, and then find out what the ongoing maintenance cost is. I seem to recall that, especially with the Defender software, that it was heavy on the front end, and then, yeah, um, you know, maybe a few a few thousand ongoing. Well, and in the end, we can rough it out too if she can't have that for us in the time. But uh, you know, there are a few adjustments we I think we can make to get us closer. I don't see anything and usually I'm good at that finding it but I don't see how we're going to be able to, to equalize the numbers we'll have to make a few changes unless you know 
remember, we have a huge ending fund balance, and we're not counting, uh, we're not realistically counting our unexpended budget authority at the end of the year either as revenue coming in. Is that correct, well, Jennifer? Yeah, I mean, we we definitely do have um, the ending fund balance at the end of this year to work with. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. So along those lines, um, Jen, can you talk a little bit about um, your conversations with the sheriff's office about their 2020 budget issues that they just they brought to light uh, last week or the week before? Sure. So um, looking at their their salaries and benefits, um, Frank and I both came to the conclusion that they they're going to be under their salaries and benefits most likely. So I think they're there they will be okay. And then um, they do have their uh, motor pool capital upfits that um, will be a, an ask for the 2020 budget amendment. And I believe that amount was uh, 340,000 somewhere in there. So um, just because we don't know when those vehicles are gonna come in for sure. And so um, if they do come in this year, you know, we'll increase their budget by that amount. And, um, and they should, you know, that amount will, will cover those upfits and they should be okay there. And then they had the, um, the body scanner of 178,000 that uh, is through the CARES Act funding that will be added in as, um, as a budget supplement. So, um, so I believe in talking to Cheryl um, that that we're in agreement that adding those couple of things in, they will be uh, under in their 2020 budget. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Okay. I found the amount for the um, Defender and it's per year, it's 3,675. Thank you. Commissioners, if I may add to that, this is Frank. Hey, I do totally agree with what Jennifer was mentioning in regards to the Sheriff's Office, but I had a moment to go and check on the Sheriff's Office revenue um, to Commissioner Netherlands' re question regarding the revenues that were um, not received this year. So for next year, they have not budgeted any revenue for North Mason High School, Pioneer School, Lake Cushman, nor for Timberlakes. The only revenue they've um, budgeted for was for Squaxin Island, which was 95,000. Uh, Cheryl, uh, when the schools are open though, are those contracts expected to come back? So right now we're hearing that uh, there probably isn't going to be money for SROs. Um, that's preliminary, obviously. Um, and it's all gonna depend on uh, what, the, what the school openings look like and then what their revenue looks like. But no, that's, uh, Frank's correct. We did not put in uh, any, anything besides the, the 20,000 20, that we believe we're gonna get from Pioneer, but we still don't have a contract on that. So there, there really doesn't look like anything right now. Do you have a rough number of how much uh, in revenue that is? And I mean, literally just rough. Uh, 120,000, I believe. Thank you. So adding in um, the Defender software and then the Sheriff's Office 27,000, that brings us to about 725,000 in, in one-time costs. Um, I believe part of that 27,000 might already be included in the small tools, I don't know. But anyway, um, 725 is probably a pretty fair estimate, I guess. Are there any other though that we had already agreed to put in that we're not paying attention to because it wasn't part of the budget because we had already 
told them they could do it. Um, I'll go through again with a fine tooth comb and see if I can find anything. Well, Jesse, you know, I think we're close anyway, because I know in my in my head, I had uh, us right around 800K. So I, if we're not that far off either which way you look at it. Okay. So now mm -hmm. how much uh, how much are, are we over total uh, total at the end? I can go back through these pages. Total, we are over, including all of these things that we've added, one million seven hundred seventy-three thousand eight hundred and twenty-five dollars. So one point um, seven mil, okay. And we do also have um, the health department transfer in from current expense of three hundred seventy-six thousand two hundred and fifty-five dollars. And the health department did turn in um, a budget amendment request to reduce the amount of the transfer in for 2020 by $70,030. Um, so my thought on that is why not just cancel the transfer in for next year and then add it as an amendment in case they, they need it. What would that look like on our bottom line? I'm missing that. That would be um, an increase of 376,255. So it would, um, that would bring us down to out of balance between revenue and expense of 1,397,570. 1 1.4, okay. Now I know there's revenue coming in, revenue coming out, but uh, and the commissioners, you can disagree with me. I'm just throwing this out just so I can keep my numbers straight. Uh, the revenue in, revenue out, I understand we're getting the CARES and stuff, and those are one time. But right now, I'm just trying to figure out one time for expenditures. So if we remove the 800K, that's uh, of one time expenditures, that brings us at 600K that we still have to move up, make up. I had mentioned it before, and we could always address it in a later part of the year, but uh, what do I got there? I've got 80, I've got uh, 85,000. If we were to move one of the transport deputies out uh, temporarily, because I don't know they're going to be able to get them even till half the year, three quarters of the year, get both of them filled, that would be another 80K off, we'll say. 520. See anything else? Now, bear in mind, I'm comfortable even at the 520. The reason why I'm comfortable is because we have the unexpended budget authority that will be coming in difference that will that will cover that. So we actually won't be backwards at, after the next year, unless something drastic happens. And we still have some that we're, you know, should be allowed to spend out above what we actually need. That's just my two cents on that. I'm, I'm not dictating. I'm just asking everybody what they think. Um, I think one of the things that I would, I'm interested in hearing is uh, Peter's. Oh yeah, I forgot about Peter. You know, and I, I think, um, you know, if he does, if he does want to do it on contract, um, what that looks like. If he is going to ask for an FTE, what does that look like? Um, and then the other the other question I would have is, uh, we know that it's it's you know virtually impossible for the sheriff's office to have um, to fill the one open position that they currently have with uh, jail deputies, let alone two additional for next year. Um, I want us to have a conversation with them about how they would manage. Uh, if building when building 10 is open and those positions aren't filled um, before I kind of go down that path. So I, I think that would be helpful information to have um, in making that decision. But I, I think the bigger driver right now is, is what exactly um, public defense is, is going to be asking for and, and how we address that. Yeah. And, and in doing our, our early numbers, uh, I hadn't thought about, I forgot about Peter. I'm glad you brought it up uh, on a contract. I, it, if you guys do numbers like I do, just keeping them in there, I would throw a minimum of additional 50 K for a contract uh, in, in, into your thinking. And no matter what we do on the deputies, the one thing I would like to ask is that we are able to stay one in front 
only reason why is we need to be able to uh, keep testing and keep, you know, them in the process. Because if they do actually get to the full, uh, if we took one out right now, if they did get to the full two, they can't go out without us. And I'd like them to continue to keep moving forward. Right, I agree. Commissioner Trask, any, any thoughts or comments? Sorry about that. Well, um, I also want to know or keep in mind, you know, the possible mandates that the, the we'll get from the legislature this year. And are those mandates going to cost us not only just um, material, but will it will we have to also get another and an additional bodies as well? Kind of along those lines, um, Cheryl, are you still on, are you still on the call? Yes, I am. Sorry. No problem. So uh, over the weekend, I, I was doing some reading um, regarding the um, body cameras, and I was reading about what the city of Bremerton is proposing, and they've come up with a way to break theirs down over. Um, over a five-year period, similar to how we dealt with our taser program upgrade um, a year ago. And so I was wondering if, you know, I, I think we have some things that we need to fund first, um, but given that this feels like it's going to be a conversation at the legislature and, and there's going to probably be some action that we're going to need to take, um, whether it's now or down the road, um, I might be interested in, in hearing how some of these other agencies are, are able to spread the implementation cost out over multiple years, make it more manageable. Um, I don't know if you can maybe just have a conversation with Chief Drackably about, about that, and maybe there's some information he can find out that would be helpful to us along those lines. So actually, we had that conversation with the manufacturer on Friday. Um, there is a financing company that we would effectively be leasing the body and vehicle cameras. Um, the sticking point is our is the FTE that we need uh, in order to handle that uh, body of uh, work. Yeah, no, I get that. I, I, I mean, obviously, the conversation about an FTE becomes easier if you're having to pay Two hundred thousand dollars a year for material versus fronting eight hundred thousand. You know, I think that that just spreads it out a little bit differently and maybe gives us a little bit more breathing room. Certainly, and um, I can I can get those numbers for you from uh, from the manufacturer. But yes, they they are amenable to spreading that out over. I believe they said four, and I believe they said four years. Thank you. And Cheryl, do you know what the um, interest rate would be on that? I don't believe they mentioned interest rate, but let me check and I can get back to you. Okay, thank you. So a couple of other things to go over. Um, unless you want to discuss any more, um, any of these items right now, any of the PLRs. Do we know when building 10 might be open and when we would probably start using it for uh, jury trials? Frank might have an idea. On that. It, it would be in the first quarter of 2021. Okay, thank you. This one thing I'd like you to ask look for uh, Jennifer's I'm going over these things, trying to find it, but didn't we also already move some funding uh, into uh, maintenance from the auditor's office? That was a large amount that's actually gonna be one-time expenditure. And you don't have to know now, but it, can you mind taking a peek at that? I will, I'm gonna look in the back numbers, but. In the in the auditors? Yeah, I think I remember one there. And I'm, I'm, there's some others, I'm just trying to remember where they were. And there's it's a big book to try and find one mark next to it to say, hey, pay attention. Yeah, I know we can look at that. Go okay. ahead. <laughs> I know we had extra expenses, but they were uh, COVID related. So those might be what you were thinking. 
it, it could be. Possibly that. And but if it is, that would still be one time, right? You know, that's uh. Right. It it would be an in an in and out. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, because I think a lot of the funding came from AOC for their for JAVs, and but there was one for JAVs. I think that wasn't funded by CARES. Correct. Yeah, and that was in um, that'll be in district court. Right. Sorry about that. Oh no, it's okay. Um, yeah, the auditors, I think that what we moved into maintenance level was um, items that had offsetting revenue, but I'll, I'll double check on that. Um, so a couple other things that we still need to discuss are um, the 1% on the property tax. So right now um, we will be adopting the resolutions for current expense and road to um, to bank that 1%. Um, but we can always take that 1% in 2021. That's an option. And that would be roughly 100,000, maybe a little bit less in total. And then we also uh, have the um, the option of the levy shift for um, for the diversion. So this would be it wouldn't change the way that we're accounting for any of the diversion in the in the budget. It would still um, come in as a property tax um, to current expense. It would change the way that the sheriff's office has to um, account for the diversion. If I can, I, I'd, I'd like to jump on that one up front. Uh, I would be supportive of doing some of it. And the reason why uh, is twofold. One, a little easier for accounting and, and it's more answerable uh, uh, to the folks that are on our tip cap. But two, the, as we know, we keep putting uh, our sheriff's department under stress on trying to get things in the right line item uh, line so they could pay it off or this would give some ease. There's another reason why we might want the ease. If in fact we do end up removing one of those transport uh, deputy positions at this time, uh, that position in there covers two different things. It also covers the ability for overtime and a few other things that we had talked about. Uh, this would give them more flexibility to use it for that if that's what they needed it for, where they would not have that flexibility if it was to remain uh, monies uh, for traffic. Yeah, I'd like, I know, to, I'd like okay. to know what the sheriff's office thinks about that, though. Commissioner, do you have a refresh my memory? Do you have a number in mind? Uh, not really, but I it would make sense. Uh, remember, anything we do now, we're going to have to pay for later out of the general fund because we're not going to want to go back and take it out of roads. But I would think maybe a million, five hundred thousand at the very minimum to give them the uh, cushion or the the flexibility that I think they need that they've been lacking. Chief Sperling has done an incredible job. I, I mean to take nothing away from that, but I know the stress level of trying to make every dot fall into that place has been really tough. Because as I said, what was it the year before? We bought vehicles that we shouldn't have bought. So that ended up meaning 300,000 coming back out of that. Uh, we had more the year before that is another several hundred thousand. It's hard to do. So I'd rather not have to worry about that at the, at the next year. I know that that's been a, a sticky point for quite a while, for many years. Yeah. So I'd like to see if sure. we could, if we can, if we can fix that. That'd be, that would be. Well, there's one thing I want to make clear to you, though. Uh, there's a reason why we haven't done that. Is there's a slight increase that goes into your area, I believe. Uh, Frank, are you on? Can you explain that a little bit? Because I don't want to blindside the commissioner. I want her to know what we're doing. Yes, the. So if there's a levy shift that occurs in the city of Shelton, there is the potential of a, an increase in their taxes. They don't pay road taxes, but with the levy shift in essence, they would be imputed a road tax. But given today's valuations, um, I believe there would not be an impact in that um, this year or 
in at least the next foreseeable few years. But that might come back to be an issue should the valuations decline, property valuations. That's what I wanted to, to hear, uh, Commissioner Trask. The reason why is in the past we've been so close on their cap and stuff like that. Uh, anything that we would have done would have had a, a, an impact on them. It sounds like uh, we're in the good times now where it won't, but I just wanted you to know that and to be aware of that so that you weren't sideswiped by anybody or, or thinking anything. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you, Randy. And, and I appreciate the explanation. Second year budget. I've no. learned a lot, but there's still. Well, Commissioner, we've never talked about that before, so you couldn't have learned it yet. <laughs> this is the time <laughs> to learn it. That's you're, you're doing incredible. Uh, thank you. Well, you've been very helpful, and I appreciate that, too. OK, so we'll do some more research on that then, or um, just wait on that, or how do you want to proceed? I'd be willing to do, well, I'd sure like to hear from the sheriff's department if they have a request before I even open my mouth. Yeah, I agree. I think we have a few items that we would benefit from having them weigh in on again, yeah. included. Cheryl, are you available? There she is. Yes, yeah. Um, so we're doing our tracking in the month of November. And as soon as, as we have a re-verification of what those percentages are, I think we could have a number for you later this week or maybe early next. Can we ask that you take out the hardest, the things are the, because you know, you're, you're doing an incredible job on tracking everything and you're making it, but some of this stuff, you're probably having to put in 10 times the work that's necessary. Could you look at what it would be like to have those parts and those, that work removed? Uh, and give us a number based on some of that too, please. Certainly. Thank you. Okay, so we'll wait to hear from them on that. Um, we also have the issue of the TST funding, the treatment sales tax funding. Um, it's in revenue right now in current expense. Um, coming into the Sheriff Department, we have 150,000 in the maintenance level but in fund 164, where the treatment sales tax lives, um, on the expense side, we have 48,000 on the maintenance level. So we have 102,000 hanging out. Um, we did have two meetings with, um, with the mental health fund and the jail regarding the treatment sales tax funding and how to um, get that proven that it, it is being spent correctly. And my takeaway from those meetings is that we will be able to prove that that money is being spent correctly. Um, the, the jail nursing staff is going to, for 30 days, keep track of what they are doing um, for those inmates. And um, that's the information that's needed in order to, um, to reimburse that, that funding. So my recommendation would be to put that money in, the 102,000 in as an expense under fund 164. And um, you know if it doesn't end up being uh, proven or spent, then we can always do a budget amendment next year. But I was gonna I say, can't we do a budget amendment next year anyway? Just leave it where it's at and when we know exactly where it's going to go to, do that amendment at that time? It's lopsided right now. So it's in it's a revenue in current expense. So I need to make them equal, the transfers in and out. So it right now it's 150,000 in, in um, as a revenue under the sheriff department. So I either need to lower that revenue to, um, to be whatever is in treatment sales tax or increase that expense in treatment sales tax. Can we look at uh, billing or offsetting uh, some of the increases that we're paying on the nursing and stuff if, if, as they're spending time uh, for that purpose. Can we offset some of those costs because that would be beneficial yeah. to us greatly. Yeah, can I, can I jump in here, Jennifer? Yes. Yeah, so Commissioner, that's exactly what they're talking about doing. And I think, I think moving both to the 150 revenue and expenditure makes sense um, given some of those conversations. I, I think 
as an example, um, when a nurse is passing um, medication in the jail that is related to uh, behavioral health or substance use disorder, that can be billed to treatment sales tax, but we've never had the, the tracking data to bill for it from the jail. Yeah. And so that's what Jennifer has been really working on and with uh, Chief Hansen and, and Lydia from Public Health is to, to try and figure out the uh, appropriate mechanism to track those, those that time spent so that it can be billed. And I, I, I think where they're headed is really positive. And I, I think if we give them that, you know, it, now that we have that clarification, this is probably the year that it makes the most sense to actually put the 150 in there versus the past couple of years where we haven't been tracking appropriately or, or to the level that we could have been to maximize the use of that fund. That's good enough for me. And just to clarify too, if we lowered that transfer to 48,000, that's the max amount that they could receive that the sheriff's office could bill for and receive. Right now they're billing for roughly 60,000. Um, so anyway, I would definitely increase it to the 150. That would be my recommendation as well. You supportive, Sharon? I am, yes, please. So am I. You got three. <laughs> Thank you. So if, if I could too also just um, step in for a, a quick second um, on treatment sales tax. Um, I don't think it's gonna be ready necessarily for uh, adoption of the 21 budget, um, but the mental health position that the sheriff's office briefed in their budget workshop, uh, the under sheriff has had a couple of meetings um, to try and, and hammer down what a job description and scope of work would look like for that position. Um, and he's, he's met with some folks uh, from, from Kitsap County as well as from public health in Mason County to talk about what that position could look like, how that would kind of complement some of the other work that's already being done with community partners. Um, I know you're both familiar with um, like the quick response team in, in Belfair or that started in Belfair at North Mason Fire with Peninsula Community Health and some of the other programming that we have um, coming online. Um, and so I think as they kind of put that together, that there will be an ask eventually for TST money, um, at least to, to get that started, uh, that, that, wouldn't burden the, um, that wouldn't burden the general fund, but would still give us an opportunity to do that work. And so um, just wanted to kind of give you all a heads up on there to not lose sight of that position, that there might be an alternate way to fund it that really works in concert with some of the other programming that has been happening. So. Um, in the next couple of weeks, uh, the undersheriff uh, and Abe Gardner from Public Health are going to be working together on uh, visiting a similar program in Kitsap County and bringing back some information to help with that conversation. And so I just I wanted to make sure that both the undersheriff and, and Public Health got credit for continuing to work on that in a way that moves the idea forward with funding that doesn't impact current expense, but still gives us a shot at, at doing that important work. Glad you brought that up too. Um, it, this was brought up at, at WASAC, one of our WASAC meetings, uh, to see if there's, if because of the, I guess the echo effect of COVID and how badly every county and city needs help with mental health. And so this, is, this was brought up to see if we can bring it to the legislature to ask for assistance as well. Yeah, excellent. I, I think, you know, as many, many eyes on it as, as possible will, will help. You know, a lot of this is, uh, is driven in large part, again, by, by changes that the legislature has made, um, you know, and so hopefully they'll give us some help in, in, in uh, solving the problem that they created on this with access to Western state um, changing and pushing that work more into the communities where uh, at, at the same time as changing the funding model, for the organizations tasked with providing these services. So um, definitely appreciate that being on the radar of WASAC and whatever we can do to be supportive, just, just let us know. Yeah, we, can, we, can, we continually uh, bring up uh, Western State. Uh, Pierce County doesn't like it much, but I can tell you all the other counties are very supportive of 
reopening that. We're also going to bring that up to the federal level to see if we can get assistance there too. And one more thing that I wanted to bring up, um, the ongoing costs of building 10, uh, once it does go into service, I believe it will be roughly 400,000 annually. Um, I haven't checked that number with um, Kelly Frazier, but um, the security would be about 170,740. And then the, um, if we have two corrections deputies, 172,000, and then roughly 50 some thousand for you know, power, water, sewer, um, other, other facility costs. So roughly 400,000 annually is my estimate. Um, and then furnishing of it, depending on you know, how we do that furnishing, it can be done through Washington State surplus for a minimum amount of money. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, I would say, you know, $10,000 or le way less if we go through Washington State surplus, um, most likely. So, um, so 10,000. Yeah, I would think so oh. somewhere in there. I know Kelly bought like a thousand chairs or something for there for like 20 bucks. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, it is pretty insane how, how cheap it is. And that- that, 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 was, actually, sorry, that actually was probably a slight exaggeration on my part. So for everybody oh. <laughs> might be might be taking notes, that's just an exaggeration on my part. I didn't write it down. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. I was gonna ask you for a quote on that. Later on, later on. <laughs> okay, so can we go through um, where we started out and then what the commission has decided on just for my own clarification and for that as the, of the public as well. So we started out at a balance of 1,773,825 between revenue and expense, just looking at um, the one, one year. So we're, we're moving out the 376,255 transfer to public health, is that agreed upon? for next year? Yes? Yes. Thank you. And then moving um, one deputy, or is that being held off until we talk to the sheriff department? Uh, one corrections deputy? I'd like to hold off. Okay. And how about um, Commissioner Netherland and Shudi? Do you wanna hold off as well? well? Hold off in what way, in which way? Um, moving that body into maintenance level. So right now we have two deputies that are in maintenance level for the total cost of 172,000. Um, it was talked about moving one body out. So uh, removing one FTE out of the budget. Okay, yeah, I, yeah, we hold off is fine in that sense then with me. And then we had the $50,000 um, for Office of Public Defense. Is that something that you also want to hold off until you talk to Peter Jones? I'd like to at least have a placeholder in there of the 50K for contracts, because we're going to be dealing with it. The question is going to be how much. So having at least 50K in there will give us numbers that we can still work with. If the others agree. I would agree with that. I mean, I think we're going to have to make some investment there. And so I don't, I don't think there's a reason to remove or keep that, you know, like you said, we'll have a placeholder for it. So. Yeah, I, I agree either, either um, for, for, for a body or for a, um, to contract it out. Okay. And then we have the 60,000 um, transfer in from historical preservation. And I just wanted to clarify that everybody is okay with, with that one time transfer. Yeah, I don't think we have any choice unless we want to keep charging them for every time they write a check. 
I'm good with it. <laughs> okay, I'm good. Thanks. If I may interrupt for just a moment, I just got an email from Peter and his suggestion is 72,000. So he's asking for a full then. Yes. He, he's, he hasn't put it obviously together, but as a placeholder, um, he's suggesting 72,000. Is that for a, a, an FTE then? Uh, let me go back to the email real quick. Um, is a 40 case contract is 6,000 per month or 72,000 a year? Is that fully loaded? Well, if it's a contract, there is no loaded. Oh, yeah. gotcha. Sorry. So, All right. So, so, for the, it, just for the sake of conversation. Body, yeah, if it was a body fully loaded, it would probably be slightly higher. But is it, and, and so I'll just ask the, maybe the, the question that might get me in trouble here with Sharon and Randy, but is that maybe the better investment at that point? Contract or, or, or a body? Which one are you thinking? Well, I, I guess I would like to see it, it priced out both ways. Um, you know, and I, I don't know if an FTE there would give us more flexibility um, overall. I, I, you know, I don't, I'll, the I'll moment, defer to Peter's judgment on it, but it, I mean, it might, it might make more sense if you're going to have to put the money into it. Cause it doesn't sound like, it doesn't sound like this issue is going to be a one and done. I mean, it's going to be an ongoing issue with, with those, uh, with the, with the order that the Superior Court is talking about. So. Right. That's the new order. Correct. Yeah. The new RCW. I guess for now. So are we okay with just put dropping 70 in there uh, as a holder then? I am I'm fine. I mean, that's at a minimum. Yeah. I was going to say if we, if we want to put a placeholder in there for, for an FTE fully loaded, then I, I think I'd be more comfortable putting that in there as a placeholder. Frank, can you see what a what a full FTE looks like, real quick? Or Jennifer, either one of you? I, I can take a quick look at it. Yeah, fully loaded. I mean, I would say off the top of my head, a hundred thousand for for a um, for FTE there coming that's in. Right. At, that's what I was thinking. I I would be comfortable with that. But I'm a little confused that he's asking. He's saying that it's a half-time caseload in his email. That's why I went with the 50K in my head because of what that yeah. initial email said. But I don't know. I don't I know, know what the one. I mean, I, mean, so I, I think he's that saying the, the way I interpreted that is that it's at 40 now for where we currently are for part of the year. Um, and so I think he's just he's he's extrapolating that over a full year. Like 40 is 40 would be a half of a case or, you know, half of a full caseload. Um, and so I think he's maybe expanding that over the full year would be a full caseload. Again, I mean, I think this is, we need to have a little bit more conversation with Peter. Um, otherwise we're all just kind of guessing, I guess. All right, so we can hold off on this until we get a, a, a better answer. So hold off completely and don't put anything in at this moment. Is that, or or do I you think, want to put something? I think in? my recommendation would be to put, you know, at least the contract amount in there. I think we have to. I don't think we have any choice. So I'm supportive of that as well. That sounds good. So seventy thousand. Is that the number? That's what he's asked for for the moment. We'll, we'll make our further decisions 72, later. 72? Yep, that's what he was asking for. Okay, and commissioners, are you all in agreement with that? Yeah. Yep, yep. that sure changes our numbers. Just keep in mind. Well, and I think depending on how the conversation with, goes with Peter, um, you know, that obviously would change some of my other priorities. Um, you know, on here, which is, I think, why we need to hold off on a couple of the other things until we have the full picture or a fuller picture. 
Okay, and then we just have the um, 1200 in district court that I accidentally put in. So I'll, I'll remove that. Um, we had the, the 1% in property tax that we're gonna bank that can either be used or, or banked for later. Um, do you want me to do anything with that or do you wanna think about that more or put it to rest? I think I'd like to think about it more. The commissioner, Netherland and Shudi, do you have any thoughts on that as well? I think we're going to have to look at it, but we need to think about it more. But if we're going to make sure that we, I'm hoping we don't, but if we're going to make sure that, that we don't go backwards, we still need to have that conversation again. Yeah, and that's something I wanted to clarify. Um, when I when I stated at our last budget briefing that our revenue is actually lower this year than it was last year, what I meant was in the treasurer's office, and it is um, it is lower in the treasurer's office at this point in time by one hundred twenty one thousand six hundred six hundred eighty six dollars. So. Um, Anyway, I just wanted to clarify that since I made this statement that. Um, but I, th I think after we had our meeting with the treasurer, I think her her concerns were real, especially when it came to the timber and stuff. So that's why we all agreed as a commission to accept that, I think. Yeah. Agreed. Yep, agreed. So, you know, I guess, you know, my perspective, you know, I, I I'm, I'm comfortable you know, holding off on on a decision on the one percent, um, give it a little bit more deliberation, um, and just revisit it when it's appropriate. So, Jennifer, on an off conversation on that, uh, I want to be real careful with what I'm about to say because this is where we could easily get into trouble. Uh, I'd like to have you send me uh, what you think is going to be our our ending fund, uh, unexpected ending fund balance uh, as an educated guest being extremely conservative. Because <laughs> that is a scary, that's a scary place to even be having these discussions during the our budget, but it, it ha we have to be aware of it and at least have an idea. But if we do include any of that in our thinking on budget, we need to be extremely conservative. I only say that because it happened one time before and it only happened the one time, but that's what caught us all off guard is all of a sudden uh, that dropped to nothing uh, at the same year where we had uh, our timber drop and everything else. And that's what we had to deal with that year. It was it had never happened before and hopefully it'll never happen again. But I wanna be from now on extremely conservative whenever I even think about that particular line item. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, right now, not having looked at where October ended up, um, the 14 million, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. And, um, you know, that number is changing, especially as we um, finish up our 2020 budget amendment and supplement requests. So, um, yeah, I, I feel at this point that the 14 million is a, is a conservative good number, but I'll definitely look at that again. And I will share any any new um, estimates with all of you commissioners. Well, share it directly as how much you think it's going to be uh, separate, not, you know, from our, our, our current any fund balance, what you think the unexpected budget authority that we're not claiming in our budget. Okay. Yeah, and that too will depend on um, on, uh, on where we end up with our budget amendment. This, I'm not going to lie, this has been a really tricky budget amendment and yeah. supplement, so. Um, it's gotta be, and you still don't even know we're gonna get in yet from uh, all the CARES monies. Yeah. But yeah, I can definitely um, figure that out and I'm hoping to have that ready something ready by Wednesday for briefing on Monday um, for the budget amendment for you. So that should kind of help with that. So another another 
question, um, Jennifer, is, you know, looking at everything that we had already moved over maintenance wise, um, maybe just taking another look at that and having us maybe go back through that to see if, if any of that, if it all is absolutely necessary or, you know, if there is some discretionary nature to some of it um, that we could, um, you know, we can maybe pull back. Yeah, um, I can send you um, the detail if you want to see it on um, on where departments are at this point in time and their budgets through October. I think that um, looking at that and then comparing it to their their budget asks would maybe help. I don't know if you want all of that detail or if you want me to just um, kind of summarize that. Uh, yeah, if you send it to me, I'll, I'll take a look. I don't, yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. Okay, so that was all that I have. Is there any other um, discussion that you want to have on the, on the budget? Yeah, I just want to throw it out to the commission. Uh, if we start talking about the cameras and, uh, and having a CSO, I want to remind you that um, the, we have positions for our resource officers that are no longer being paid for by the contracts. So that means it's coming directly out of the general fund. And maybe we should, could have, if they're not gonna be at the schools, maybe we could have one of them or have some shifting so that uh, that can cover the uh, uh, people that handle the, the body cam uh, recordings and stuff. Just throwing that out there. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I, I think that's just another example of you know, why this needs some further, further conversations, um, you know, before we commit ourselves down this path. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to commit to it without having, you know, an understanding of, of what the long term effect is going to be um, operationally and, and financially. So I, you know, I think we just need to continue to, to think through it and, and try to make as informed a decision as we can. I'm just thankful that we have, we, we don't have to make a decision today. So the more information um, you can give me and, and that we can get from the sheriff's office, I think the better. Okay, great. I will, um, I will make these changes and then send the updated budget to you. And I, I just want to remind you really quick that um, there is no, um, no change yet for the general services Teamsters in this contract. And also, um, the um, if it's adopted, the wage increase for non-union. I think those have to be in, though. Uh, when do we get those? I mean, when would we have that? Factor? I'll update it. Um, I can update that and send it to you by Wednesday. Because I'm pretty sure. I mean, especially yep. in the CBA side, but even on the the non-rep side. I mean, I think we've already yeah to those. So I mean that. We need to be looking at those numbers in this. Yep, agreed. Yeah. Yeah, I've got to finish up that uh, budget amendment and then um, and then I will uh, do this as well after the adoption of the non-union. And um, the general services Teamsters, I will get with Nicole on that and find out where, where that's at. I think it should be fairly, I think it should be almost complete. So okay. yeah. so you should be able to get a, a good idea of what's going on. Okay, great. So that was all that I had. Any other last comments or thoughts, commissioners? So Jennifer, just kind of generally, we meet again next Monday on budget. Um, you know, what are, what are some things that you'd like to have decided then that, that we should be thinking about? I would like to have decided um, the levy shift option, uh, if we're going to do that or not, in, in lieu of diversion. And the 1% uh, property tax increase, I mean, ideally, that would be nice to know which way we're going to go. Um, it's not absolutely necessary at that point in time. Um, the uh, sheriff's office deputies, um, 
if we're going to keep those in or not, um, the amount for OPD, um, I mean, just any, any other shifts that are being talked about at this time. Thank you. Thank you. I got one thing for everybody. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Way too soon, Randy. Way oh, too soon. They're, they're, now, soon. they're now playing Christmas music on the radio. It's definitely time. No, no, not yet. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Great. Thank you. Thank Bye. you.